look away to um, to, a, to a cemetery. It's a it's a small cemetery. It's um, it's the one that my um, my mother is is uh, buried in, and um, I'm on my way just to get some flowers and some, some horses. It's her birthday, and um, well, it would be her birthday. And uh, yeah, so I thought that I would um, find out if it's okay to do a little bit of a, a looky film because it's a it's an old cemetery and it's I think it's quite beautiful and uh, it would be nice to, to have a little bit of a look. I'm not going to show uh, people's graves or I'm not going to show my mother's grave. Uh, that's that's an invasion of, of privacy but I will give you a bit of a stand back overview again if that's okay. Um, my mum died uh, with almost three years, and uh, yeah, if she was uh, still alive, she'd be 62. She died of uh, cancer, and um, yeah, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit sudden, but um, that's that's the way the cookie crumbles, as they say, um, and. Uh, so I'll be going there, I'll be giving some flowers and just doing some bits and pieces. And um, I just thought it would be nice to, to show. Uh, and uh, as I'm driving up, I was just reminded of you know, just the bits and pieces that you do when you're, you're entering a, a cemetery. So you, you always, it's like anywhere, if you're going to someone's home, are respectful of that that space. Uh, so a cemetery is exactly the same thing. You're, you're respectful of the space. You don't go in and start taking things and, and moving things around without without asking or acting like it's your it's your house. Um, that's just that's just not the done thing. Uh, every every uh, tradition every um, family, every um, country, whatever, has their own way of, of honouring the, the dead and of dealing with, um, dealing with the dead and, and, and uh, moving into the cemeteries and, and also moving out of them. Uh, and uh, so everyone has their own, own way of doing something and uh, you, you can't say that uh, well you're entering the, the, the graveyard wrong because you're not doing it the way that my tradition is or you know, my my great uncle is blah 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 and uh, he said this and so you're doing it wrong um, just the simple fact that every every tradition every Every country, every everyone has their special way of doing something, uh, and as long as you're doing it with reverence and you've uh, you've asked and you, you you know your way of doing something is going to be is going to be right, um, and uh, so just going down the driveway, it's a a secluded area, and, um, so it's not it's not a main cemetery. It's a it's a small one. It's part of a, a family family plot. So the cemetery and the church that is that the cemetery is on uh, was helped built helped built. It was uh, the 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 family helped. Um, the, uh, the family helped build it, um, and this is uh, the family that my mother was um, married into. It's not the, it's not my. Um, so it's, it's from a second marriage, but um, so it's not not my blood. But he is um, 
part of uh, part of the family. Um, okay, so here we are. It's quite nice. So um, I will. Um, as I said, everyone has their own way of. Uh, everyone has their own way of doing something, and entering a. Uh, a sacred area of uh, a of a cemetery. Uh, you now. I was um, reminded um, as I was thinking about this of uh, a lovely lady who, uh, when I went to went to New Orleans uh, for a couple of weeks, and uh, we stayed with her and um, one of her um, the priestesses. And uh, that was uh, Reverend uh, Velvet Ray, and uh, she died uh, a couple of weeks ago, which is quite sad. And uh, when I when I heard that, I remembered that um, when I was there, she actually um, showed me the way that that they enter a cemetery, and um, which I thought was was really quite uh, quite nice. And and uh, that's you know, how I. How I do it, but it doesn't mean that it is uh, that it is the only and correct way. So um, what I'll do is I'll do my little bits and pieces, and then um, find out if it's okay to do a bit of filming. And um, I'll see you in a, a little while. Okay. Well, I I did ask, and uh, apparently uh, filming wasn't allowed, but taking photographs was. It was it was okay. I uh, took out my camera to start filming and the the card said it was full and then it has happened before I have gone into certain areas certain sacred places and the, the camera has just inexplicably turned off uh, and then once I've uh, gone out of that area the camera is able to work again so it's not something that's unheard of so at the end I'll have a few photographs of the, the cemetery the, the the graveyard I haven't shown any any gravestones any names it is just from from a distance just so that you get a bit of a, a feel and an idea of this very beautiful place it is extremely old uh, it's not well, extremely old in, in relation to Perth, Western Australia. Perth, Western Australia was, was founded uh, in 188 years ago. And this, this graveyard was founded in 1820, sorry, 1838. So it is about 179 years, years old. So it is quite, quite old and you, you get that feel you get that sense when you you're looking around uh, through the through the site and uh, I hopefully you you'll actually enjoy those, those images now when you're entering a graveyard I, as I said I was reminded uh, of uh, of how I actually do it because I was I was uh, taught by by velvet wreath who uh, who actually died uh, beginning of the year, I think it was the fourth of fourth of January. And when I met her, she was a wonderful, wonderful woman, and she was fondly known as the Swamp Witch. And in 1994, she co-founded the Covenant of the Pentacle Wiccan Church, which then became affiliated with the Aquarian Tabernacle Church, which is based in Washington State. And when I was there. I was there on holiday with a, with a friend and we stayed with one of her priestesses and they sh showed us around in at New Orleans and it was, I, I really, really enjoyed my time there. And she went through how you go um, enter a, a grave site. We were actually going to see uh, Marie Laveau's uh, graveyard and um, so she uh, went through how you how you enter a gravesite the the proper way to, to enter a gravesite now 
As I've mentioned before, every tradition has their way of dealing with the dead going into those sacred spaces. So no one way is the right way. It is right for your tradition, it is right for your culture, uh, so it is something that, that you uh, come come to terms with and how you how you enter these places as long as you enter them with respect and leave with respect and and conduct yourself in a, in a respectful manner then you should have no no problems at all so when you enter a uh, one of these places you are going from the realm of the the living to the realm of the dead and you have uh, the gate you have the gatekeeper and when you are going from one in, uh, space to another, you need to, to, to pay, the, pay for entrance, pay for entering one realm to another. And she, uh, I, I won't go through all of it, uh, but the basic gist is that you will pay the, the, the gatekeeper. Uh, it's usually about three, three pennies or three coins, and you would ask for entrance. You would then enter, but you would enter walking backwards you would enter leaving the realm of the living and entering the realm of the dead not bringing any of the realm of the living with you and going into the realm of the dead and it would be the same as when you when you left now some traditions pay going in and pay going out but you don't I was taught you really have to do that but when you left you turned around and walked through that that threshold backwards so that you were leaving the realm of the dead, leaving whatever that is there and entering in the realm of the living again. And if you're, if you're going into a graveyard to, to dispose of any workings or, or, or whatnot, and there is that idea of when you dispose of something you don't look back, and the idea of, of turning and, and leaving uh, backwards, it seems counterproductive. But if you think of it in the way of you can turn and leave an area backwards, it doesn't mean that you actually have to look at the area that you disposed of your workings. You can look down, you can can leave an area respectfully looking down. You don't have to look at, at whatever it is that you've disposed of. So there you get the idea that you can do these sorts of things, not look back, but still turn around if that makes any sense. But you're going from one realm to another, and that's something that you need to kind of understand. You are, you are passing through a threshold, you're passing through, say, one universe to another, and, and understanding, understanding that. And when you are doing that sort of thing, if you're going into a, a grave graveyard, then a lot of the times it is always nice to make sure that you are... Um, you, you dress nicely, you're, you're respectful obviously, but you can kind of give yourself a little bit of a, a cleansing beforehand and obviously definitely give yourself a cleansing afterwards because you don't want to have anything that was able to pass through through the gate that has um, gotten past the gatekeeper and um, you don't want to you don't want to take anything home with you so many people do do a kind of like a spun a smudging a sponging they can do a sponging if they like but they do some kind of of uh, cleansing afterwards some people like to smudge with some sage or, or whatnot but I, I find that a little bit it's not something that, that that is quick and easy especially if you're in the car you're outside of a of grave grave site you, you you're just drawing attention to yourself and I don't like smelling of, of smoke afterwards and so there are different ways of doing it you can do it um, mentally and energetically just uh, uh, feeling that you're the everything is just washing off of you and going into the ground and you are kind of, uh, covered in a, a ball of uh, a shielded ball so that nothing can can touch you and attach onto you uh, you can do it uh, with a kind of spritz and I've, I've got one that I've made up here now I do different things all the time there's no one kind of recipe the basic thing is I usually do a little bit of Florida water because it smells kind of nice and it's, it's used for cleansing uh, a bit of uh, a bit of holy water so that would be some salt in there some blessed some blessed water maybe a little bit of a uh, small bit of dragon's blood or some kind of little uh, a little um, 
crystal of some kind that is used for like a shield or, or repelling certain energies. But I will, I will go with my gut. I'll go with what I think I need to do for that time. And uh, a little bit of a spritz. So it smells nice. A little bottle. It can fit in your bag. It's not something that is, is too out of the ordinary and if you do give yourself a little bit of a spritz no one's going to kind of go oh what are you doing or why do you smell like uh, sage or you know, and sage usually kind of you know, people equate that with marijuana smoke and then you know it, it, you're going down a wrong road but if you just spritz yourself with something that smells kind of nice your aura is uplifted your your vibrations are uplifted and if there is anything that has attached itself to you or is trying to attach itself to you that is of a lower vibration it won't be able to do that so it's just all of those little bits and pieces so respectfully enter, respectfully leave, make sure that you don't bring any anything home with you and yeah, it should be all good. So I'll leave you with a little quote taken from uh, Velvet Ray's little, my little first workbook of Wicca. Now I lay me down to rest. I know today I did my best. Into the God and Goddess's care I'll be, with the Guardians watching over me. Blessed be. If you like this video and want to see more, please click on the links provided. If you think this witchcraft thing may be for you, please subscribe. Blessed be.